Hello and welcome to the show. The Ford Focus Rally Cross car does still reign supreme. We have a very interesting collection of cars go racing past. Uh, the Focus Rally Cross car does, yeah, very much still rule the uh, snowy rally course. However, the Cyclone got very, very close last time out. Today, oh, I don't know what's going to be going up against it. I'm going to be doing another wheel spin. Uh, build so I'm gonna go and buy wheel spins until I receive a car whatever vehicle that is provided it is I've got to remember where they are they are they're in here here we go oh actually I've got two free wheel spins if we win one in these as well I will use that one provided the car is within the PI limit and not a car that's already gone around the course we will be using it 14,000 credits fantastic if we could win a horizon edition car that would be amazing I think it's very unlikely though nope we are <laughs> We are at our usual, our usual luck. I was going to say, was there a Horizon Edition Aldi? That would be a... <laughs> that I wouldn't complain at. Oh, we're going to... We're not even winning big money at the moment. It's, it is, you know, at least kind of got to make it worth my while. Again, there's another chance at a Mini. Come on. Mini would be interesting for this soon. No, no, we're going to have a 10... Oh, Renault 5 Turbo would have been nice. Also quite scary. Um, apparently the game really wants to give me an RS4 event. I'm okay with that. I like the RS4 event. Um, no. Oh. <laughs> so close. So close. I mean, an X5, X5 actually would probably stand a chance of going fastest. We're doing good at winning decent sized money prizes now. We're in here. Uh, M M6, probably, probably not so much in terms of uh, quick. Well, there we go. We have got our car. <laughs> Chevrolet Camaro Z28 is going to be our vehicle today. Uh, we are going to add the Chevy to the... I don't even remember buying one. I will be... I will be honest. Oh, that one. I should have done this. Parked out front of the area. Now we're going to go drive around a corner. I think a whole corner to uh, get us back to the Horizon Hub. Or the festival site, whatever they want to call it. And... Oh, it didn't come up with a message fast enough. I was trying to be lazy. Okay, Camaro means we're going to be rear-wheel drive. However, probably have pretty giant tyres on the car. As I said, apparently, I have one already. I don't think I've ever used one. I probably, uh, yeah, judging by the fact that they've both got new next to them, I suspect I won. <laughs> I won one of these in a wheel spin at some point. Okay. Big tyres. Relatively sizable amount of weight as well, which... As I found out when doing the parts investigation, actually can be quite helpful when it comes to whoopsie, a rear-wheel drive car. So we're probably not going to take take the weight reduction. We're just going to go brute force it, I think, is going to be the answer. We will get some Forza Aero on the car. I want the downforce. We'll come back to the bonnet. We might, might end up using it. We're going to, of course, get some lovely snow tyres on our vehicle. I don't know if the standard engine is going to be enough. Three, four, fives on the back. That's good news. What are they at the front? Two, seven, fives as well. So, lots of traction. Lots of traction is uh, going to be very, very helpful for this vehicle. Uh, we will, of course, get it on the off-road suspension and handling parts. With a car like this, definitely all of the handling parts are going to be without question. And we've got the PI to play with. We've got plenty of PI to play around with in this car. While I do think about it, what are our options in terms of engine? 6.2, 8.4, or the V12? Bloody hell, the V12 doesn't quite fit within the PI, that's a shame. 700 horsepower would be quite entertaining. Uh, but we could go for the V10 if our standard engine doesn't get halfway through S1 class, which I think it probably will. We will have to wait. Uh, uh, it might not actually, because this is the kind of terrible era for muscle cars. So I don't actually know how much power the standard engine in this one here will will be getting. Are you looking... Uh, looking like it might possibly do it. As a general rule with this series, if I can get the car to the PI with its standard engine, I want to. And having it halfway through S1 class will mean that more cars are probably going to be able to. But as I said, this one here doesn't have the greatest of engines to be beginning with, so it doesn't look... I mean, I could do it with weight reduction, but I don't really want to, is uh, basically what we go. going... Yeah, I think we're going to have to go for a different a different engine in this one. So we're going to go for the V10, I think. I mean, 6.2 litre V8 is great fun, but not as much fun as a V10. So that is what we will have. Can we have a supercharged V10? <gasps> Oh, we can have a supercharged V10. Yes, that is what I want. In our Camaro, 
for going racing in the snow. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. Uh, we've still got plenty of PI to play around with. Uh, I'm going to put the clutch. What I will do, though, is... Ah, right, so that's... That's where a lot of our PI is coming from, of course. I forgot because of the standard gearbox in the car only being a four-speed. Bugger. I completely forgot about... Uh, I'm assuming it's a four-speed anyway in this car, come to think of it. Uh, yeah, it is, it is an older muscle car, older than the uh, sort of normal ones that uh, that we would be seeing. However, it might still only be running with a four-speed, so we need to go and change that up to a race gearbox. Uh, then we will. It's kind of a shame. I think one older Forza games, it used to, if you changed the... Oh, I don't want to do all that because we're going to go put turbos on again. If you changed the engine, it gave it a sensible gearbox because you wouldn't put a v you wouldn't put a Viper engine into this and then have the Camaro standard gearbox go with it. You'd take the Viper gearbox. But uh, yes, I I believe that used to be a thing that happened in older Forza games. In Horizon, does not seem to be the case. So you can end up having. I think you can end up having like with the Bel Air that has like its two speeds. You can put like a crazy engine in that, and it will yeah still have the uh, the two speed gearbox. Right, so we are going to be running on its standard engine. Yeah, we are getting up there in terms of PI now. 582 horsepower. I was hoping for a bit more out of the car, but we're not going to uh, be getting it. Okay, well, as I'm not actually hugely fussed about weight, I'm okay with going for going for intercooler. I tend not, I normally avoid it, I tend not to go for it, but in this instance, I'm actually not too fussed about the car being heavier. Uh, we will we'll go for a flywheel on there as well, and uh, I guess clutch will probably, clutch and drive line will get us the PI that we need. If we go that stage clutch, we go full drive line, and we have the differential in the car. There we go, 605 horsepower, making it, I think, the most powerful car, because the Focus only has 600. It also has, by far, the most torque at 722 but relatively heavy, 3,200 pounds. However, huge tyres should, fingers crossed, give us decent traction even though it is rear-wheel drive. We could well see a new fastest rear-wheel drive car. So it is off to the Mountain Peak Scramble Circuit for our Camaro. It is going to get five laps around this circuit in an attempt to go as fast as possible. The current fastest non-all-wheel drive car is the Mazda RX-8, a 129.3 is the target we are looking at. As I said, I think this may well stand a chance of beating that. Of the all-wheel drive cars, the 205T16 is a 126.1, and I don't think we're going to be quite going there. I'd be surprised if this could get near the Peugeot, but this might have one of the best shouts of of any cars, really, these, these muscle cars with uh, with huge tyres, quite a lot of power and so on, might give us the best shout of a rear-wheel drive car uh, going as quick as possible around here. I mean, the overall lead of the Focus is in the 25 twos, and we're not... <laughs> I would be, again, I would be astounded if this were getting even remotely near a 25 two. We are most definitely slipping our way through <laughs> that uh, turn one. Quite a different beast going from the Cyclone to driving this that is just all of the wheel spin through there however once we do get on the power up here it is going to be a mighty mighty fast accelerating car when it can find grip now through mccray we have been seeing cars uh hitting around 100 miles an hour in that section which uh, well, it would be very good going if we could get the camaro there uh, <laughs> The off-piece twist is going to be taken completely and utterly sideways, I think, in the Chevrolet. Of course, the downside of uh, having all of this power is, well, there is just simply more power and more torque to spin the wheels up. So, <laughs> that is the downside of, of keeping the PI, you know, saving the PI, not going for the weight reduction. There is... Uh, you end up building a car with just considerably more power, and with that considerably more power, we go very, very sideways. Now, through the Kimmies we go, clipping the ice patch on the inside. I think it's carrying decent enough speed, uh, but it's, yes, it, it can carry good enough corner speed. It's got, I think it's got the tyres to really carry the good enough corner speed, but it's corner exit. That's where the all-wheel drive cars are so, so strong, and where these vehicles are always, always going to struggle. Although, this is, I think, doing pretty well. You've just got to watch the back. You've got to watch the back end. If you can get it sorted, you can get it out of the corners quite nicely. But it's so easy to waste 
such a huge amount of time with the car sliding around. So, we're going to be very, very gentle. Gentle, gentle, gentle with the throttle. Up across the crest. A little bit of airtime, I think. A little bit of airtime across that crest. We're going to try and not slide through slide there. It's... Uh, <laughs> A little bit more difficult to do in the Camaro than some other cars. If the all-wheel drive cars are wanting to oversteer there, it's uh, going to be a, a little bit more of a trick trying to keep a very, very powerful muscle car from uh, going for a sideways moment in the snow. This is probably, again, this is where we, where we struggle massively, climbing such a steep, steep hill there. We are through Nisa this time around, though, much less in the way of wheel spin. Take out the fence on the way through. Again, trying to be neat and tidy as much as you can, but that is yeah, much, much easier said than done. We can... We don't have the uh, same chronic understeer that we were suffering <laughs> with the cyclone there. It's all, all been replaced with oversteer. I actually can't decide whether it's better just to go full aggression and attack the ice through that corner. Uh, oh, we don't really turn into there very well. Yeah, I think... I think we might actually, through the Kimmies, if we attack the ice at the first part, just run across the ice. I know we're not going to have any grip there, but if we take any of the other routes, we end up just so compromised in terms of line, we might be better just driving across the ice and dealing with it. It is a 130.8 from the Camaro on its first flying lap. It's... Ooh, oh, God, just about pull it up in time. It's got a little bit of a uh, little bit of lap time to find if I'm going to get this quicker than the RX-8. I was expecting it to perhaps be going quicker than the Mazda, but that is not the case so far. Now I'm thinking fourth gear through here is going to be the better the better option. Third, you just sort of sit at the limit of the whole way through. If we can get that straightened up through there, not really. <laughs> Not really, it's about 94, 95 miles an hour through that corner at best. We have been seeing speeds up towards the 100 mile an hour mark. The off-piece tweezers bumps aren't causing too many issues though for the Camaro. Unlike the Cyclone, oddly the Cyclone, one of the vehicles that I would expect to be okay through that section. Admittedly it's not the highest riding, it was much more of a sports pickup truck than anything. But uh, I would have thought that would have fared better than the likes of the RX-8 to the Camaro, but uh, not the case at all. Now through here, I actually left it too late to turn in anyway. I don't know. There is a line. There is a line I think you could get through there across the ice that if you can get spot on might work. Oh, it's not got the turn in grip for that corner. We can't throw it in there like you could with the 205. It is just not going to... Uh, not going to have that. We turn into satellite. Try and not take out the fence on the inside. Try not to take out the wall on the outside. We have just about skidded our way through. Only got a couple more laps, though. Only got a couple more laps to go faster. We haven't got as good of a brake as we have seen from some other cars. We're having to brake before we get onto the sort of rocky section into that turn one. And then it's just patience, patience, patience. Third gear is pretty good in terms of finding some traction once we're out of the corner, although we had a little bit of wheel spin on the way up. Didn't know there was a bump on the outside. Thankfully, we didn't quite roll the car over it. And then... Oh, we can't turn... I can't turn in with anywhere near enough... I say enough speed. Oh, and then we're going to run very wide. Yeah, I can't get the front end of the car to turn in to... Uh, into these corners. Come on, make it up the hill. This lap has all gone completely and utterly, utterly, horribly, horribly wrong. Spinning the wheels all over the place. It's not, it's not gone well. It's not gone well so far for the, uh, for the Camaro. We're going to have one more lap. There's going to be one more lap to uh, try and find some speed. I don't, ooh, I don't really know if I want to chuck the car into that corner sideways. I think I'm better off just being smooth. Generally, that's the only way that I'm finding speed uh, around here. If we really cut the ice through there, it could work. It could work. It's uh, a very, that's a very, very risky line. I think there, as I said, I think there is a way to do that. That you might be able to find some speed at but it's incredibly risky because the ice is a little bit unpredictable down there and not really not really where you want to be because you're kind of just throwing the car and hope that it'll give you back control at exactly the right moment in time <laughs> the amount of times we nearly clonk the wall on the run out of uh, satirite is quite amusing we've got away without any big accidents there so far right so we've gone for that uh, late apex we will avoid the ice on the way out of the opening corner. I think I should have left it in third, though. I changed down to second, kind of without thinking, and we got a big burst of wheel spin. We have, though, made it through there. Okay. Now, 
through McRae. It's getting it turned in through the second part is where I'm having difficulties. So I'm taking a very wide approach on the way in. That's much better. It's much better, although as soon as I try to put any power down, we end up out really wide. And then if we end up, yeah, if we carry too much speed on the way into this section, you end up out wide and then you struggle to get up the hill because it's just that little bit steeper. So we fall the way past the rocks. Now, we will be flat out through this next corner, which is not going very fast in the Camaro. I say we're not going very fast. We are doing 90 miles an hour on snow in a 600 horsepower classic muscle car. But, uh, well, it's a muscle car now. <laughs> it's got this much power going on, not so much from uh, from standard trying to weave our way through the Kimmies no problem this time around and into Diabolica actually that's the best we've had the Camaro through there it actually did get it turned in through that corn corner this time around one last turn to go don't clip the fence on the inside try and get some power down <laughs> I think we might have brushed the wall either way we are through it it's across the line but it's not faster I thought that lap was the best one I'd done. Apparently it was not. I'm very surprised actually at that one. I definitely thought that was going that was going faster. We did not though. With the Camaro, the big tires were not enough for this vehicle. Um, they can have kind of celebratory donuts. Not really sure what we'll be uh, celebrating with the Z28. I think. The issue we have is that we just don't have the front end grip, really, with this car. We can't quite get it turned in. And while we do actually have you know, pretty decent traction, considering... Not bad traction, really, considering everything. It's not enough to, uh, to overcome that. That means that uh, the Camaro will go... It'll go into fifth place. It does beat the Abarth 695, so it doesn't get uh, doesn't get embarrassed by the little front-wheel drive Italian car, and it does also uh, fairly comprehensively beat the Supra Mark III. However, loses out to the Mazda RX-8, about second and a half down on the RX-8. I think that's a very... For a rear-wheel drive car, I think that RX-8's lap time is actually going to be quite a tough one to beat. I really did think that this Camaro would stand a good shout of, of going quicker than the RX-8. However... It, it didn't. It did not go quicker than, than the RX-8. Couldn't make the most of its, uh, of its power. It is, of course, a fair way down on the likes of the 205 T16, the GMC Cyclone and Focus Rallycross, as we would expect. But, uh, yeah, that, to me, that's a little bit of a surprise. It's a little bit of a surprise. I thought we might be going quicker with the Z28, but it was uh, not to be. However, that is going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.